Boris Johnson has suffered a major blow after one of his special envoys and own MPs resigned over his plan to push ahead with overriding parts of the Brexit withdrawal agreement with the European Union through the government's internal market bill. Rahman Chishti, who is Mr. Johnson's special envoy for freedom of religion or belief and also MP for Gillingham and Rainham Flag, wrote on Twitter he can't support internal market bill in its current form. He said alongside the resignation letter he has sent to Mr. Johnson, I've written to the PM resigning as PM's special envoy on Forb. I can't support internal market bill in its current form, which unilaterally break UK's legal commitments. As an MP for 10 years and former barrister, values of respecting rule of law and honouring one's word are dear to me. The plan from the Prime Minister to defy international law with legislation that breaches parts of the Brexit divorce deal, faces a vote in the House of Commons on Monday. Parliament will debate the internal market bill, with ministers then voting to decide if the legislation should proceed to the House of Lords, where opposition from Conservative members is expected to be even stronger. But the Mr. Johnson, who has an 80-seat majority in the Commons, is facing a revolt from some of his own ministers, while former Prime Ministers including David Cameron, Theresa May and Tony Blair have all criticised the plan. Jeffrey Cox, who served as Attorney General under Mr. Johnson before he left the role in February, said it would be unconscionable to override the withdrawal agreement, adding there is no doubt the unpalatable implications of the treaty were known to the Prime Minister when he signed it. The Brexiteer warned he would not back the internal market bill unless ministers dispel the impression they plan to permanently and unilaterally rewrite an international agreement, with tariffs and customs procedures on certain goods entering Northern Ireland from Britain were part of the deal. Mr Cox added if the powers in the bill were used to nullify those perfectly plain and foreseeable consequences then it would amount to the unilateral abrogation of the treaty obligations. He wrote in the Times, when the Queen's minister gives his word, on her behalf, it should be axiomatic that he will keep it, even if the consequences are unpalatable. No British minister should solemnly undertake to observe treaty obligations with his fingers crossed behind his back. 